Welcome to the New Grounds Podcast. Today's episode hosted by Psycho Goldfish. Hey everybody, welcome to the New Grounds Podcast. It's our spooky time episode. Today we are going to be talking to a bunch of game developers. We've got uh, Tyler Glale here. How you doing? Doing pretty good. We've got his Action Script 3 rival, Afro Ninja. How you doing? First time on the show? I know, it's an honor. What's up? What's up, what's up? And we got another ninja here. You might have heard of him. He's uh, the creator of a little game called Ritz. Uh, that joke never gets old. Yeah. What's up, Cam? Humble, humble, little, <laughs> humble little web game. New kid moving in, getting it done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How you doing, Cam? How you doing? Doing good. Just got some groceries. Hell baby. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Halloween stock Dating up. through some old games. Woo. All right, so the reason we're here today, we are going to be having a show. This show's called The Graveyard of Games, because that sounds spooky. In reality, it's just going to be us nerds talking about the games we never finished. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Very, very spooky for most game developers. Yes. Yes. All right, so it the, haunts us. It haunts us every night. We can't yeah, sleep. Yeah, you stay up at night and you're like, ah, oh, damn. What if I finished <laughs> that game about the guns on the trees? <laughs> 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 all right so let's get into this games we have not finished there's kind of a couple categories um that that i think of when it, when we talk about games that we didn't finish and the first one i want to talk about is games that are are bad and when i say bad i don't mean like we were just writing the shittiest game in the world i just mean like something went bad with them be it like just a bad partnership um the engine you were using was bad, whatever that may be. Just something, some bad experience that was like, okay, I'm never doing this game. It's done. Um, who wants to go first? Who's got a bad game to talk about? Come on. Oh, we all got bad games around here. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I released most of my bad games. Yes. On <laughs> so uh, that's actually the weird part. Like the worse that the game that I made, like the more likely it was that I would release it. <laughs> Because by the time that there was enough game that I could tell it was bad, it was basically done. I just put a title screen on it and it's shove like, it on the website. Over with. <laughs> get, yeah. get it out, out of, of you. Out of my mind. It's done. It's done. done. Well, yeah. It's well. done. Put it. So what you're saying is you didn't lose any sleep over those ones. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so I, I, I guess to be fair, there's the, the there's a project that I worked on for uh, a little while that, that comes to mind for this category, uh, mostly because after enough time passed, I looked at it and I was like, there's, it was just such a, a bad idea. Like the longer time went on, the worse it got. Uh, so I was really into making this game called Website Sim. And so a long time ago, uh, I made a game called Newgrounds Sim and it got really popular on Newgrounds and, and a lot of people played it and it was great. Um, and then I was like, oh yeah, I want to work on, I want to make sim games. Like that's going to be my thing, I guess. And, and then I got the idea that, uh, instead of just making a uh, new ground sim, I'd make this game where you made a website, right? Like, I guess you would make new grounds or something. I don't know. <laughs> so I started working, yeah, I started working on this game and like at the time, this was, this was a long time ago. So this was back when, uh, I guess people could make like blogs and like probably travel websites and, and they could actually make money from AdSense and stuff like that. Uh, but like as time went on, it became really increasingly obvious that people didn't make like I guess unless you were Tom or someone making a, a content portal, uh, you didn't really like, like your career wasn't just like making your own site like your business. You know, people use websites for like portfolio work. Uh, they do it to like you know advertise a game or something. Uh, a big company has it as a service. But I was like, for whatever reason, I was all in on this idea that you would like almost like a game dev tycoon type game. You would make your own like website, but it was just, and I spent so much time on like the, the intro animations and like the, uh, just like the UI stuff. And then like every year I would look at it and it would just, it would feel less and less relevant until I was like, no one, no one wants to play a game about making a, a site about, you know, it just, it didn't make any sense. So that was definitely one that uh, I had to just uh, kind of quietly uh, stop working on. Just put a pillow over its head one day. B uh, basically, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. You work your way out yeah. of, of like getting like the free domains, and then you eventually work your way. It's like, okay, now I can purchase my own domain name. Yeah, basically. <laughs> yeah, I, I had like... <laughs> Yeah, it was. Yeah, I'm trying to. Yeah. I have like a screenshot here pulled up. Uh, yeah, it was like I had a skill chart. I don't know what the skill chart for a website is. I, it doesn't make any sense. I, <laughs> I guess like you learn HTML. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you learn your HTML, then your CSS, and then and yeah, then I just 
how to whip all the boomers into a frothy rage. Yeah. yeah exactly. So. And then you have uh, the DLC that, yeah. where you can you can just get a WordPress site. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> basically, yeah. Basically. I think the only way that that would like work is if it actually like exported an actual website for you. I know. Yeah. yeah. No, that that's actually a good idea. Just just, but... just make a website and pretend I made a game. <laughs> <laughs> it's just GeoCities yeah. but like <laughs> what the yeah, hell what's that old story Microsoft front page it's just Microsoft front page or whatever the hell it used to be called <laughs> yeah. uh, so me personally mm-hmm. my, my story here is actually Alloy 2 and it's not that Alloy is bad or that Alloy 2 is going to be a bad game it's that I started it back in Flash 8 something like that so I started it in mm-hmm. Action Script 2 took a break started getting proficient in action script three and learning things like startling and stuff like that. I said, oh man, instead of having like four objects on the screen without the game chugging, I could leverage the GPU. I could, but I just learned all these new technical specs I could be using and it you just got died. Like 10 because, objects on it once. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, was, it was, it was like, I'm not going to finish this action script two engine now that I know what it could be. But on the other hand, I, I didn't want to start it over. So it just died. <laughs> So flash bad, yeah. flash old flash bad. That, that that's my bad. Times changed. Times yeah. changed. Yeah. I've been going through my like Newgrounds project system, whatever. And I got I got one that's like hot off the presses of just like a game that will never be done just because it's like not not worth the time. It's like I I bought like RPG Maker like a month ago, and just like <laughs> in one night for like five hours straight, me and my friend were just making this like dipshit meme game for like one of our friends called like pew quest and we're just like <laughs> just this dipshit rpg maker game for, like dumbass like bullshit jokes like yeah this is gonna be the funniest this is gonna be like we're gonna put it on this and have all these like deep cuts like some undertale bullshit where it's like this super specific thing and it's like oh <laughs> you said it was called yeah. Q- Q- quest q quest yeah yeah pew okay. quest pew quest because our friend uh, okay named- Pew-pew. Oh, I thought you said Q, gotcha. like QAnon. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of oh, what I thought, too. Uh, <laughs> that's a whole different game. Oh, We're not going to talk no. about that one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that one will come out. Will come out. Yeah. <laughs> we got whites only, blacks only, and Q-Quest. <laughs> <laughs> the trilogy. The trilogy. Jesus the bundle. Yeah. yeah. So we get ready for the Kotaku think piece about it. <laughs> yes. Can't, can't wait to hear Twitter's response. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The yeah, RPG Maker. I will say it was fun to like bullshit around for like just the the day in like RPG Maker and like whip up dumb shit and like use the default like UI and just be like, <laughs> hey, check this out and just plays like Little Wayne song on the title screen like blasting <laughs> like oh, yes. music. <laughs> nice. Yes. We're gonna we're gonna license this. We're gonna license this song for the title screen. It'll be awesome, and funny. The game's so good, Little Wayne will just give it to you. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody yeah. would believe if you actually bought the license for that. <laughs> yeah, like that's that's, show, that's like, like the best legal part documents of it. to Tom. Yeah. yeah, I I would take that on your yeah. for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But just put them on the title screen. The, the title screen is oh, literally yeah. a video of Wayne <laughs> it's saying just the fun- <laughs> oh, yeah. You have permission to use this song. <laughs> Signed by Lil Wayne right. himself. <laughs> What was this podcast about again? Little Wayne. This is the Little Wayne podcast. Little Wayne. This is the Little uh, Wayne yeah, podcast. Yeah. This is the Wayne cast. The Wayne cast. Yeah. Special Halloween episode. <laughs> what, do you, what do you think Wayne's dressing yeah. up as this year? What do you think? What do you think? Hmm. I th- uh, I boyfriend think he... from Friday Night Funkin'? Oh, yeah. He, of course. Like, Look, I'm rapping. I think he's, I think he's going to record <laughs> his multi-platinum artist, Little Wayne. I think that's what he's going to dress up as. <laughs> but, mm. but he's going to wear a grill with like bats and pumpkins on it and shit. I don't know. Spooky, mm. spooky. <laughs> yeah. What about you, Tyler? You got a story here? Yeah, I got. All right, I got a big list of games that I didn't finish here because I just wanted to make sure I was prepared. This is <laughs> uh, so the top of this list, I think I have this one game that was um, supposed to be a follow up to the game that I made uh, called Tetraform, which was if you played it on Newgrounds, there were a bunch of like spaceships that would come at your planet, and you could magnetize two of them together and they would just be pulled towards each other and crash. And then like stuff would pop out of them and the planet would absorb the energy and grow like a bunch of trees on it and stuff. So this game was supposed to be like a follow up to that. Um, Cause Tetraform was cool and was actually good. Uh, but this follow up, you were supposed to grow trees 
on a little planet and you could grow them branch by branch and then choose what to put on the individual branches of the trees, which could either be another branch or a leaf or a gun or like a battery. And the leaves would give energy to the <laughs> gun, which could then shoot like space bugs that were going to come after your planet. Yeah, no, like the more that I des- describe it, the worse that it sounds, right? <laughs> So at some point I got distracted with this because the space bugs were just little dots that moved towards your planet in a circle or whatever. Um, I started doing this, uh, AI, like they would, they had like a whole bunch of list of like configurable properties for the space bugs and it would spawn like a hundred of them. And whichever one like did the most damage to your planet, it would take that one and like breed variations of it so <laughs> that the enemies would get harder depending on like what you did. And they just, they found, like, bugs and exploits in the game that would just make them, like, tunnel into the center of the planet so you couldn't shoot them and stuff. Whoa. It was it was kind of funny, because I fixed that bug, and then they found another way to do it in a completely different way, where if they just went fast enough around the planet, they would glitch into the planet. <laughs> that's, so the, after... that's what they mean when they say singularity. That's what yeah. they mean. <laughs> Pretty much. So, like, after, like, three rounds, the bugs would just, like, tunnel into your planet, and that would be it. And, uh, yeah, no, it, it wasn't very good. It wasn't very <laughs> fun. Game design. That could have been and, uh, it just sort of like... them all before the three-minute mark where they learn. Yeah, I don't... So, there was something about, like, also having nests that could spawn if you had excess energy and then, like, flying animals like elephants and tigers and stuff would, like, spawn in the nests and you could send them to other planets. I We didn't get that far. <laughs> um... <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm, no, it, I'm, just, I'm just glad the the trees on the guns wasn't a joke. I because didn't you? I I feel like you mentioned this and and before we started the show, and I was like, yeah, that's like funny. I didn't realize it was like actual the, the thing you were working on. Uh, as oh yeah, one of your games. <laughs> no, no, I mentioned that. It's real. Purpose. It's real. I've played yeah. it. It's real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I tried to play. It. I tried to play it. I should say. <laughs> I don't remember. Like, did I have like a build of that? Or was this a video? No, it was a build. You had a old okay. SWF. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It was interesting. Yeah. It was neat. Like the the camera work and everything was cool. There was some potential there. But yeah, yeah. It was. It was. So it was, it was, it was a thing. It was a thing. <laughs> mm-hmm. It was definitely a thing. Uh, it wasn't wasn't fun though. No, I I, yeah. I didn't have a good time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, on the on the theme of games that just went bad, like. You guys got any other stories just in general like, you know you talk about specific games just like why games died uh, like for me for example um usually usually it's me that's bad i get uh i get all hyped up about doing a project i get people together and then i just get a little bit of work done on it the exciting i started it part and then i just get like okay i gotta take a break from this and do my real job and then i never come back to it <laughs> like yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I got I, a real, I, I got a real good one for this. <laughs> um, I, I was just gonna say, like, I, I think everyone has that kind of honeymoon phase, like whether you're going to a different project or not. But you like, you always start a project because it, it sounds amazing in your head, and you do like one week of work on it, and it sucks. It's not fun, and there's like a million things to do, and you just scrap it and, and go to something else. But like, uh, I, I think artists and uh, programmers of uh, both kind of do the same thing on that, uh, but that's just my experience. Yeah. What were you saying, Tyler? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I have, a, I have another good game for this uh, topic, where I had this game, which was it was just called Bird Game, was not going to be its actual title. This is a relatively recent one. This is like a couple years ago, actually, um, where it was kind of like a precision platformer where you were a bird that could fly. So instead of like a platformer where you're like fighting gravity, like you're just you're flying around as a bird and trying to dodge stuff. And uh, the controls for this were actually, like, it was really fun because I kind of um, I, I kind of just ended up moving the controls into a way where it kind of felt like a top-down racing game, almost. Like, there was a lot of, like, drifting and, uh, like, momentum-based stuff with the bird where, like, you could take fast... If you took too sharp of a turn, it would, like, lose traction and start drifting. And it was actually pretty fun. And then, a game released on Steam that was exactly this fucking game. Oh. <laughs> like, it pretty much exactly, like, what I was working on. And 
um, it didn't sell well on Steam. <laughs> like, it wasn't a success. <laughs> and I'm like, ah, oh, god damn it. So, like, I just kind of, like, lost lost motivation to just keep working on that because, well, it's, like, not fun so, to do a game that already yeah. exists. Already exists and, and, and fans didn't claim or tear. Yeah. It's, like, a double yeah. dick punch right there. Yeah, they're like, a double whammy. But, like, I've only worked on it for, like, a month before before that happened, so it wasn't, like, a huge loss or anything. Only a month. That's that's nothing in game dev time. Yeah, these days. In the new Grounds <laughs> era, that would have been, like, a, I could have made, like, 20 games. Right? <laughs> well, you could have. <laughs> yeah, 20 bad games. 20 bad them. games and release one. <laughs> they literally had, like, one one of my games on Newgrounds is literally just a collection of, like, 20 bad games. Nice. <laughs> Bad game simulator. <laughs> Sean, that's what you yeah. should do. A sim where you just make bad games. Right. I'm, t- I'm taking notes. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Cam? What do you got for um, just like general bad experiences somehow bad. making a game? Oh, oh man. I got I got this this like Ludum Dare, Ludum Dare game that I worked on a few years ago. This this has like this wacky ass development story. I like didn't have internet at my house, and I was like, okay, I still want to like work with the, the artist pal that I wanted to work with, but it was like, I didn't have internet at my house, so I had to go to my mom's friend's house, and he was kind of this like crazy psychopath <laughs> dude, and he like, I was like programming at his house just like all day, and he just like tried to talk to me, and you know I, I'd be nice and like talk to him back and like. Make you know, make good old chit chat as I work on this humble little game jam at the time, and and then he just like throughout the night he just like kept on like acting more and more like crazy and he got like drunk or whatever. It's like he's like talking about the same like bullshit, like talking to me about Rush and all this like <laughs> like bullshit like for like three four hours straight, and it's like I just wanted to like code and get this work done and be like. As soon as you mentioned Rush, as soon as you mentioned Rush, I just got an instant mental image of what this guy is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's it's like that, just this crazy like <laughs> maniac. And I had to like, it's just this this game that's like this like typing game or whatever. But I couldn't get anything done on it because like, just all you know for a game jam, like a whole day like lost. That's like. That's the like game jam. Game j- it's yeah. Like, yeah, that is the game jam. It's like, oh man. Jesus. I like tried so hard on like the last day to like get as much done as I could, but it's like uh it's fumbled. I went through all that to not even have like a finished game. Like the gameplay was like a mess also, and it was like it's like, oh come on. I, I like endured talking to this dude like all day about like dipshit, whatever, like <laughs> But you, you know so much more about Rush now, so I think you, I think you still came out ahead. Yeah, what's a bird is uh, what it's, drummer drummer <laughs> man. The, the the surgeon is that his name? Sure, oh, he's the surgeon. He's the surgeon. And then there's the other guy that that, that does the sing and the guitar guy. Yeah, 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 I love Rush. Rush, great, great band. They don't make they don't make music like they used to. You know, <laughs> all that all that <laughs> shitty hip hop, all that shitty the hippity hop. Yeah, the Lil Wayne, the Taylor Swift. <laughs> they don't make real music anymore. Fucking Lil Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> Lil Wayne. We brought it back. <laughs> uh, what do you got, Sean? You got any other uh, bad experiences, just in general? You, so like. The, the other like bad ones usually come down to uh, usually like me being bad at programming something like it and I, it depends like what era of flash this is but like like the, the the thing that comes to mind is actually the the battle saber game that, that you and I started like a long long time ago oh yeah yeah because so, so um because you you'd sent me over these animations uh like you had this like mech dude who would fly through the air and he would like transform between mech and sword mode uh and it looked really nice and it, uh, the animations are great and like all this stuff and and you were like i forget what exactly this story was were you just like looking for someone like you had stuff to do and you were just trying to like yeah because you usually do the programming so, so but this, you were like trying to find a program this game was something i had dreamed up fucking back in flash four like the original one it was it was just like this little robot that followed a mouse and when you clicked it he swung a sword and you'd, you'd smash stuff and it's one of those ones I sat on so long that the idea just got bigger and bigger. You know, the feature creep thing, you know. That's yeah. that's another bad experience there. Like, you work on things and you get so much feature creep that you never finish them. 
Um, yeah. And that's basically what happened. Because this game, the scope of it got bigger than I wanted to do on my own. And, you know, Sean and I had been hanging out on IRC a lot. I was like, okay, this guy's got some skill. Maybe, maybe I can talk him into coding the game and I can focus on the art and, and it'll finally get done. And then, yeah, it didn't. <laughs> well, so because I think back then, I'm pretty sure like I literally only made uh, point and click adventures at that point, and so like I would eventually work into more advanced stuff. But I remember like you sent this the like like the files to me, and and I started to put together the the basic game. So I got like the dude moving around the screen and firing, and and like I got most of it hooked up, and then like you, I showed it to you, and you're like, yeah, that's cool. And you were asking if I could do some kind of like a zoom, uh, like some kind of dynamic zoom, where if like the character was in the middle of the screen, it would be zoomed in. And if they were at the edge of the screen, it would like zoom out to, to show them everything. Right? Yeah. And uh, I was like, dude, because back then, I mean, especially this was before, I mean, it's like Flash had the V cam, but that wasn't even really for games. But like Flash was never suited to like the idea of like moving. It a, didn't have a camera an actual Flash. camera. You it, had it didn't to have make one. it. Yeah. So, yeah. You had to do like weird stuff with scaling the stage up and down. Yep. And I had like no idea what this was. I could not wrap my head around like zooming the camera in and out. And, uh, and I think I, I, I told that to you and you were like, oh no, like, like this. And you like went and basically I just coded it. Yeah. Whole... I remember that. You just coded it. <laughs> and then, yeah. And then you like sent that to me in a separate file and you're like, yeah, like this. And I was like, and, okay. and it probably wasn't and documented, just, like... right? Like there was no comments. <laughs> no. <laughs> So I just like I just like Single copy pasted variant. the code. <laughs> I just I copy pasted your code verbatim into the other file and like sent it back to you. And you're like, yeah, that's great. And I'm like, yeah, but I just like I you did that. Like you 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 just made this, so I'm not doing anything. Um, but and then I think that's where it stopped because I was like, I I'm literally not <laughs> just copy pasting your code into the, my own version. You're tricking this, so. me into programming my own game, <laughs> basically. <laughs> If you would have kept it up, it probably would have got finished too. I just wouldn't have. Yeah, I know. I should have just. Been I, like, I would have oh, yeah, felt so like I, I had help. Part. I would have felt like I had help, and I would have been fine. <laughs> like Josh, you're so smart, dude. Can you just help me out figure out how to like make this thing happen? <laughs> oh, fucking great, fucking great. Additional programming. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. No, he's the lead programmer. I did the additional code. <laughs> yeah. He did all the heavy copy pasting. <laughs> You're just like the assistant. Yeah. yeah. I mean, programming is just copy pasting anyway. So. I, I just get a shout out in the, the special thanks part of the credits. Yeah. Yeah. Special thanks. Or just go completely uncredited and then yeah. talk about it on Newgrounds. Yeah. Because Twitter didn't exist yet. So I had nowhere else to yell. Yeah. Like, you just kept it humble though. Yeah. Uh, you kept it humble. Nah, nah, he did, he did most of it. Yeah. He did. He did. He did. <laughs> that way if the game bombs and sucks, it's like, yeah, Sean. That's Sean, man. <laughs> <laughs> all right so we kind of talked about bad experiences here's another area i want to talk about um sometimes you make a game and it, it kind of falls into that bad experience where you don't finish it it's not what it is what you wanted it to be whatever but it's salvageable and you take either the game and make it into something different or like maybe you played with it and you're like oh you know what this game would actually be better as an rpg or whatever it is um, or this, this mechanic I put in this game is really good, and I'm thinking of this other game it would fit in better. Like, have you guys had experiences like that where you've had just like some idea that you started a game on, you pulled the plug, but that idea came back in some form in another game? Oh yeah, uh, in this case, um, it's actually a fairly notable one because I was posting teasers of it on YouTube, and a lot of people were excited about it. Um, and this one was we actually announced the name of it. It was called Ouroboros. People remember this. This was me and Ed working on it, where it was kind of like an evolution of the concept that I had in Fracium, where you kind of go like deeper and deeper into a like uh, zooming in over and over again. Except it was like on a, in a tube and as a platformer, and you would shoot things and stuff, and it was really cool looking. And we posted a couple of teasers on YouTube and uh and twitter and people were excited about it uh the there were issues with it the biggest issue with that was that it just made people motion sick like if you see a video of this you'll understand that uh the sort of continual zoom effect on it plus rotating it as you moved around the tube um it just made people motion sick and was it kind of was it kind of like super hexagon like that uh, that's kind of what i'm yeah it's, it's probably bias. Like, it's probably like, bias. It's yeah <laughs> so people in the chat should just go to my youtube channel and grab the three videos that are named thingy thingy one and, or thingy two and thingy three um 
But yeah, so when I was working on it, and also Ed was working on it, neither of us noticed the motion sickness issue until somebody mentioned that they got motion sick. And then we started getting motion sick when we were playing it. <laughs> because motion sickness <laughs> is really fucked Contagious. up like that. Like, like it's, you, can, you can give somebody motion sickness by suggesting that you get motion sickness from something. So we're like, I'm doing research. I'm like, all right, well, how do you, like, you kind of have to give a warning if something makes people motion sick. But then if you do give a warning, that's going to make people motion sick. <laughs> that wouldn't have otherwise been, been motion sick. Um, and also, like, this game was somewhat similar to Binding of Isaac in the structure that we had for it, where it would be, like, made out of random rooms and you collected power-ups that stacked and you were shooting and stuff, um, except for the fact that it was a platformer. And uh, I don't think Ed really, like, wanted to do Binding of Isaac again, like, because... Binding of Isaac was still having expansions made for it at the time, but he liked the platforming aspect of it a lot because the simple little platforming thing I put together felt really nice, apparently. Um, so we tore that out and we made The End is Nigh instead based on like the platforming mechanics from it. Um, which, so Ouroboros became The End is Nigh and, uh, and, then, and the like, end was nigh. Keep asking. Yeah, the end was nigh. That's 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 the story. It came the end is nigh, and the end is nigh was released on Steam, and people liked it. So before it before yeah. you switched and, uh, it, before you switched it to the end is nigh, did you guys ever think maybe one way to make it more tolerable was just to add a bunch of flashing light? Oh know. yeah, no, we tried everything. We tried flashing lights. We tried <laughs> we tried VR. Like uh, that was interesting. <laughs> <laughs> We just tried putting like toilet sounds over the entire <laughs> thing. Like, <laughs> like every sound effect was somebody puking, you know. <laughs> I play that actually. As it, as, it, as it zoomed in and then it plays it in reverse as it zooms out. Yeah, yeah you know, you try it all. You can release it as a drinking game of some kind. I literally so have farthest. a concept. <laughs> I have a concept for a game that I will almost certainly never make called The Vomitorium. <laughs> <laughs> this would be a VR game. Um, the game, the gameplay of it literally doesn't matter. It's just the entire point of it would be to try and make you puke as fast as possible. Sweet. <laughs> and I had idea, I had ideas for this. Like I, I was like, certainly you can have each eye in the VR camera like be different, right? Like the, the, there's nothing that would prevent you from doing that in like <laughs> Unity or whatever. So yeah. you could have, you could have a level where when you turn your head left. Your left eye moves up and your right eye <laughs> moves down. <laughs> and I I want to try it just to see how quickly that would make you like rip the headset off your head. I, I want to see people recording speed runs for it. Yeah, yes. well, you just close your eyes and memorize where the things are. But yeah. <laughs> you, you could probably uh, release it on that new site that's coming out, Meta. Have you heard of it? I think, oh, I think yeah. it's a good I bit. Should, I should pitch this idea to Facebook. I mean, Meta. <laughs> Oculus, a medical. It, it, it's a fit for the Zuckerverse. Yeah, <laughs> totally. <laughs> yeah, that's not, that doesn't count as an unfinished game because it just that never started and it's never going to happen. <laughs> Society isn't ready for that. Game. No, we're not Society. ready. Not. His, his grandchildren will make aren't it. meant to handle it yet. They're not made to handle it. <laughs> well, yeah. we have to evolve. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Would have been a fit for Newgrounds back in the day, right? <laughs> if only VR headsets and Newgrounds like overlapped on the timeline. All you gotta do to do a, a Newgrounds version is put a dot in the middle of the game and say, "Player, put your nose here," and there you go, you're done. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Oh, the cross-eyed version of like of VR where you like cross your eyes and focus on the thing yeah. in the middle. It's of the just screen. a magic eye that makes you sick. <laughs> yeah. What about you, Cam? You got any uh, games you started and didn't finish, but they went on to be something else? Oh, let's see. I I have a few games that like sort of almost turned into like Friday Night Funkin' of just like a lot of different like rhythm game prototypes of like one of them was like a rhythm stealth game like Cyber Funk. Hmm. Hope I want that to still come out one day. And it's just like you like have to move in time with the beat, and if you don't. Like the robots you're trying to sneak past will like hear you, 
And it's like it's like that bullshit. Dude, that mechanic and would I work in like, Friday Night Funkin' where you gotta sneak into girlfriend's bedroom at night. Come on. Yeah, yeah. No no modder steal that. No more <laughs> TM 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 C with a <laughs> no circle around it. it. 2010. <laughs> patented. I got it patented. So yeah. and I will sue. But, That's right. It's on the record uh, now, baby. <laughs> and so I've got like that. I want I want that to come out still because it's like got awesome work by like Ivan Almighty. And it's from a few years back, but and then I I have another like little music game that was like almost this like beat sequencer like this like FL Studio like place down a beat like type type bullshit and and that was like a a cute and quirky little prototype I didn't I didn't know what to do with it but it was just like a a cute little cute little beat machine type type game uh but one of the worst ones was like this like. It it barely barely got off the ground. This is like this Mega Man type game that was like music based, and it was like you sh- you shoot the gun on beat. It's like stronger, and you jump on beat. You're a better jump, but it's like it just like did not work at all. It just like was not coherent at all. It was just like, and I feel like the music I picked was like not good. Also, so it was like I didn't even like testing it at all. So it's just like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I've, I've had that experience yeah. you, just, you hear the same song and it's not that great okay i want to i don't want to work on this game ever again yeah you <laughs> should have had that in the bad, bad experience yeah, section <laughs> yeah just a bad dice roll bad dice roll so i had a mute button is the first thing in every game that you make yes yeah. so you've been you've been <laughs> wanting to do a fucking necessary. rhythm game forever then it sounds like so you, you had uh, yeah yeah you, you had it in you you had it in you just in my brain one of them Oh man, man, you're and this is this is one of them where I just wasn't and still I'm not technically skilled enough, but I want to make like one of those like shitty like remember in like early or mid 2000s there's like all these like singing games like SingStar or whatever. I want to like make one of those and you're just like in a boy band. <laughs> and you just have to like sing to the notes and I like I like somehow almost kind of got like like microphone detection working. I think I got that through like some of the flash bullshit. How about you, Sean? You got a, a game that went to, from a idea that just didn't cut it to to a different game or part of a different game. Sure. Yeah, I would say um, a while back this kind of started in like the Newgrounds Power Three. Do you guys remember that? Oh yeah. Rest yeah. in peace. Rest in peace. Yeah. And and <laughs> and so. Um, I, I think that that whole thing was like a really great idea. And, and I, I, I remember seeing like a ton of great projects being started in it. Um, I, I feel like a lot of people got in over their heads, which is what happened with me here. But like, so I started on this game with, with, uh, Ego Raptor and we were making this basically a Castlevania game. And it was like, it was the most ambitious one pretty much that I, that I'd worked on. And it was, uh, I mean, pretty much verbatim, like kind of like a Symphony of the Night type game, Metroidvania, um, our, our, unique mechanic is we were trying to follow along with the power of three idea and make it so that you would like collect power ups in sequences of threes and like every three enemies you defeated you would you would take like a unique power from them and and combine them into something and it was a neat idea it didn't really work but um so we worked on that for a while and and uh it looked and played really nice and it, it it got to a point where, like I said, we were, we were definitely in over our head. Uh, this the the scope had gone way out of what you know Power of Three was meant to be, at least for us. And so that fell to the wayside for a little bit. And then uh, later down the line, I tried to revive it just by myself from a gameplay standpoint, just to kind of like bring it back and and get it going again because I really, you know, Castlevania and Metroidvania games have always been one of my favorites. And I worked on it like I actually moved it to Unity and. Uh, you know, upgraded everything and, and started working on it again and, and kind of stopped again. And I realized, um, part of the reason I had basically uh, that I kept stepping away from it is that I was just at the end of the day making like a cat, like pretty much a Castlevania fan game, uh, which there's nothing wrong with like making, trying to emulate the games you like, but you know, mine was almost too like verbatim, just you were like, you were playing as Dracula yeah. and you were in a castle and it was yeah. just like all the same thing. You weren't bringing anything and new. So, yeah, <clears throat> not really at all. And uh and then uh yeah, it, and just seeing like, you know, Dracula's uh, Dracula has always been in popular media. I mean, it's like um it's it's in the public domain anyway. So it's like anyone could take this idea and do anything. Like I would hate to spend so much time on it. So after kind of putting that aside and reflecting on it, I realized what really all that was that I wanted to do was that I wanted to make 
like a genuine console game, like that you would sit down with the controller, play on your TV, and have like a uh, an adventure, right? Whether it was RPG or or Castlevania or whatever, and because uh, that was something I I hadn't done, I still haven't done, but it has transitioned into a project that uh, that I'm much happier with now. It's it's um I've I've only posted like one thing on Twitter about it. It's it's uh it's it's a game about a girl and a dog going on an adventure. It's it's called Signy and Mino. Uh, it's very early in development, but basically, if it wasn't for me spending all that time on my Castlevania fan game you know, I wouldn't have realized that I was much happier just making something more original, more unique, um, and taking all of those, like, uh, you know, all the mechanics from games that I had enjoyed when I was younger. And, and I remember playing on Super Nintendo 64 or whatever, and, and, you know, taking all that and putting it into, like I said, something more unique that wasn't just the, uh, the Castlevania knockoff. So, um, cause you know, up to this point, I've, I've done a bunch of flash games. I've done a couple mobile games, but but yeah, I, I think the actual like genuine sit down with a controller in your hand kind of console game is the uh, is the big thing that I've been wanting to uh, get to. So that's nice. that's where I am with that. Console games are pretty sick, especially if you get some uh, physical versions of it printed up. Because mm-hmm. I got yeah. I got a couple of copies of uh, The End Is Nigh for the Switch and the PS4 that have like boxes and manuals and stuff. It's pretty yeah, sick. if I could. If I could ever get to that point, I mean, that would be ideal for me. Uh, I, I just think it'd be, you know, it's just like, it's, it, it's, it's very cheesy, but it's like, you know, you're a kid, you play games, it's what you have. So the idea that you could do that yourself is, is, uh, really motivating. Yeah. It's definitely a bucket yeah. list item for, I think, a lot of game devs. Like, yeah. Even, even yeah. the younger it's also ones. Also, easy. It's a lot easier these days than it was like 10 years ago. Yeah. Know? For sure. Well, it's crazy. Like, you, I, you got guys now making fucking nes carts that's fucking insane to me <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah i just mean on a technical level even like uh because i the first console game that i made was the ps3 version of closure and uh the ps3 was a mess like that was a nightmare to code on <laughs> the cell like just processors getting, just, get, yeah i didn't even fucking use the the spus or whatever the, <laughs> the six other processors besides the main one i just didn't even use because <laughs> i like intensive. reading the documentation i'm like the fuck is this shit <laughs> like, the, like, how to, there was even getting audio working i like looked at the document and there was like graphs of like uh like guitar wires going from one thing to another i'm like <laughs> there's none of that on the playstation 3 <laughs> where did do you plug like, the did, midi did, cable into no way <laughs> <laughs> did did everything basically have to be like multi threaded be, be between all the processors? Like I there never, was uh, one. Knew. There was one processor on the PS3, and then there were six um, SPUs, which were like side things, which were okay. not the same as a full process. Like this is we're not supposed to be talking about this shit in the podcast. <laughs> well, we you know what? Zinzinix didn't show we up to stop us from talking about here. nerd so shit. I'm going to talk about. It. <laughs> all right, so on <laughs> on those six processors, you couldn't just run a thread. You had to like write a specific program for that processor and that processor would just run that one program and there was like no synchronization and like i don't really know the actual details because like i said i just ignored this entirely (laughs) when working on closure because the one the one processor core that i had was enough for that game just barely (laughs) required a lot of work to get that to fast enough on there but uh yeah, sounds terrible. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> these days you, your consoles are just the same as a PC, basically. So yeah, it all lines up a lot easier. It's all standardized. Click the, finally, click the, click the export to PS4 button in Unity or in <laughs> PS5, and you'll just you'll get your game. It'll ship it to you the next day. There you go. They just need the the print uh, Nintendo Switch case button, and we're set. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> print Switch button. <laughs> All right. What's the other? Co- oh, the other subject was: um, Do you guys have any games that that died or you abandoned that you still want to bring back? You still want to bring back to life? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I mean, no. Ouroboros. <laughs> <Ouroboros> of- <laughs> it would be cool. <laughs> would be cool to have Ouroboros come back as like Ouroboros, but like not make you motion sick. But <laughs> we'll figure that out eventually, probably. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Do you think, you think it make you more sick with the high uh, modern refresh rates? Like, that the faster it goes, does that make you more sick or less sick? I don't know. <laughs> it's only one way to find out. So, yeah, I'm a boomer. I still use 60 <laughs> FPS monitors. I mean, I have I have a high refresh rate monitor that I've used to test stuff on. But, like, I don't know. 
Like I said, you tell people that a game's gonna make you motion sick and they'll get motion sick. Yeah. It's like yawning. If like you if you just say the word yawn, yeah. I think right now somebody in the in the audience is fucking yawning just because I brought yawning up. <sighs> yeah. You know? Somebody's doing it. Somebody <laughs> Fuck, yeah. I just did it to myself. I have this I have this little right prototype now. that I made <laughs> this year. Actually, I made a prototype of this little shopping game. It was supposed to be a quick little game where uh you go into a supermarket, you have a list of the items that you need to buy, there's like three or four items on the list and you have to just go grab them and then hit the checkout and leave. And you have 45 seconds to do that. Not 60 because 45 felt better. Um, and then, then it would reset and the previous version of you that went through the supermarket and grabbed all the items was still there. So it's like the cursor times 10 gimmick where you're like building up more and more copies of yourself that are getting different items from the supermarket and uh, they will plow through you if you, like, get in their way because it's a <laughs> recording of what you did previously. And you will be, like, knocked down and shit. And I have this, I have the whole prototypes functional. You can play it. It's actually pretty fun. You can – there's, like, a high score thing, um, which is how many times you're able to complete your shopping trip before you fail. Um, and I was – I just wanted it to be a quick little thing. And I finished that prototype in, like, a week. And then I'm like, all right, so if I was going to actually release this as a game, I would need 300 different 3D models of, like, food and cereal boxes and stuff and the inside of a grocery store. Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing that. that. that adds <laughs> it's up. way too much. That adds it's up. way too much for a game that you'd get, like, five minutes of enjoyment out of. <laughs> <laughs> Like, if it was 2D, then, then sure, because I could probably draw 300 shitty apples or whatever in, like, a day. Um or find an artist who could do that. Uh, but 3D is just kind of ridiculous. She's all the Gmod models. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, that still requires, like, Googling for, like, 300 <laughs> food models. Like, all right, well, I need red apples, and I need green apples, and I need frozen corn, and I need canned corn. Like, all right. <laughs> corn in the cob while you're yes. at. At we some point, like, it just corn. becomes, like, it's, <laughs> it just becomes the type of thing where, like, get it going from prototype to complete would require way more work than it's actually worth for that game. <laughs> so just like, like yeah. Asset store like downloads for just all billion different like foods. Yeah. No yeah. one ever needs these. <laughs> Usually like a full time. I was, like, I was the looking there was, there was some like full on just like entire supermarket interiors that you could buy or whatever. But like they weren't arranged the right way for the gameplay of the it's just like yeah. It's not the right supermarket. <laughs> it's not the right supermarket. I why won't this twenty dollar asset be exactly what I need for this game? <laughs> Get Food Network to sponsor it and just rebrand it as yeah. Guy's Grocery <laughs> Games and have Guy Fieri voice it and everything. It'd be great. <laughs> Flavor Town. <laughs> That's the dream. Working yeah. with Guy Fieri on a game. I think That's the dream. <laughs> yeah. The Guy Fieri video game. <laughs> We gotta we gotta bring back licensed games like the the golden era of like late two thousands like every every single thing had like a game on the Nintendo DS <laughs> oh, yeah. or the Wii the Wii as well had yeah like the a Wii ton of oh yeah the the Wii was <laughs> the Wii was fantastic. something whatever happened whatever happened to the fucking uh, Nintendo seal of approval that that kind of went away on the Wii <laughs> <laughs> yeah no lie I'd love to make a licensed game if I had creative control over it. <laughs> Little Wayne, I the game. Be there, I, I, <laughs> Little Wayne game. Bringing it back. Wayne quest. Bring Wayne back. quest. The Wayne quest. <laughs> Follow up to Q Q quest. <laughs> like I'm, ki- I'm kind of. <laughs> you license Q. I'm kind of jealous of. Uh, <laughs> I'm kind of jealous of that studio that got to do the like Nickelodeon Smash Bros. So, yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool. Like that seems like such a fun thing to do. Um, and the and timing. I did not buy it they because got it. Oh, I saw. Oh yeah, my god! Right when Smash is done. Up. Right when Smash is done being updated, they bring it out. That's fucking genius. The yeah. legacy lives on. <laughs> mm. Just no voice actors, which makes that whole thing feel weird. Oh, yeah. A little bit. Is it the same devs that did, like... Was it called, like, Slap City? Is that the uh, same developers? I think. They did make another fighting game. There's, like, a lot of indie uh, Smash Bros-type games in development, but I'm I'm trying to remember which one. Framemakers yeah. is looking pretty yeah, good. Yeah, Framemakers. Ninety percent oh, yeah. uh, of them, like 
don't get completed. They they join the graveyard of dead games. Yeah. yeah. We could do a whole show of just Smash clones here. Maybe we should. Yeah, just Smash clones and, like, <laughs> I don't know. Haven't there been at least a couple of, like, Mario Karts? Like, indie Karts? Maybe. Where's, where's my chamber? You should be on here talking about fucking Newgrounds Rumble 2, right? <laughs> <laughs> God rest its soul. God rest its soul. It's dead. One day, one dead day. forever. Yeah. It's never coming back. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I want to believe. <laughs> I believe. <laughs> Cam, what do you got for uh, what do you got for games that you want to bring back that you you never finished? I want. I want. I want. A lot of them that I want is because when I like developed them, I was just like not good at programming and not smart, and I'm still like still kind of not smart enough to do them. Not that they're like over ambitious, but uh, one of them was like this, like co-op stealth, stealth game, like online multiplayer type bullshit. Like you know, like at the time I was playing like Metal Gear Peace Walker a lot, mm. and that game is like the only like Metal Gear Solid game that has like a like co-op story mode because it was like on PSP, and it was like that. It like blew my mind, and I was like, "Wow, this game, this game is so awesome! I just want to make a game like this." And, like, I was prototyping a lot of, like, online bullshit and a lot of, like, gameplay bullshit. But I, I was, like, not smart enough to understand how to, like, get it all properly set up or going. And then I was just like, oh, uh, I just have to go by the wayside. And then on a slimmer thing, even just earlier this year, like, man, online, online is just, like, the golden goose. It's just, like, in the summer I was, like, prototyping a game that would have just been, like, a... Something similar to like that, like Nintendo Golf, like on NES, just like a simple mm-hmm. game, but a little more open world ish, you know, light open world as- uh, aspects to it. Nothing too crazy. Right. But just like just this game to like dip shit around and like drive golf carts with your friends and go- just just chill vibe of a of a golf game online with your pals. And I still want to get that done one day. When I'm a master of network code. Now, don't forget to yeah, trademark uh, it right well, now. Hurry up. Trademark copyright. <laughs> TM, 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 TM. <laughs> yeah. The merch, the bootleg merch for it's already on Amazon. <laughs> TM <Damn> it. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> no, mul- <laughs> multi- multiplayer games are a mess. Um, yeah. Never, never, never yeah, again. Yeah, they're rough. Never, I mean, ever. ever. Never again. Um, it's just... It's a nightmare. Um, actually, the one situation where I would make another multiplayer game is if I could just uh, hire somebody to do all the all the network part of it. Yeah, just produce when it. You did your thing? <laughs> did you do like? Yeah. Did you figure out all the like server and all that bullshit, like hosting it and like? So for Bomber Nuts, um, that was made in Unity. I started off using Unity's built-in multiplayer thing. Mistake, uh, because that was the that was like two two different versions of there multiplayer ago because unity keeps adding new ones and deleting the old like unity is also a mess on that side of things well on a lot of things so i started off using unities just to get it um up and running wasn't good enough so i switched to something that was in the asset store that did multiplayer instead um which also wasn't good enough but then i had the source code for it because i got it from the asset store so i went in and i replaced the parts of it that were not good enough with my own stuff. So it's kind of like starting from a base that eventually replaced most of what was there. Yeah, not too shabby. It's yeah, never again. Fuck multiplayer games. <laughs> <laughs> I sell the game sells as a two pack and a four pack on Steam as specifically there so that so that you're supposed to like buy it as a group of people and play with your friends. And people still buy it for themselves and be like, there's nobody playing. All right. <laughs> Whose fault is that? <laughs> That's not my fault. Where's your matchmaking lobby, fault that Tyler? There's nobody Come on. You did, did, there is, there is as long it. as there's people playing in the most of public lobby, people will come and play. Everybody listening yeah, right now, there's no, get Bomber Nauts, schedule a play time, get on together and bring it back. Bring it back. Yeah. Bring it back I, even, I did a base. thing where I'm like, you get bonus points if you play on Saturday to try and get a bunch of people to play on Saturday. Um, and it worked for a while. And then, I don't know, never again. I'm getting, <laughs> it's very annoying to just have a ton of people leave reviews that are like thumbs down dead game. <laughs> what, what am I going to do? Yeah. <laughs> So like, come on. Get so, like, the game, if you have friends to play, it's still fun. 
There you go. Well, see, sometimes even live published games can be dead games. <laughs> Hell yeah. Sticking to the, the theme. theme. Hell yeah, we did it. Sticking to the theme. <laughs> <laughs> so for my part, the uh, I think the one that, that got away that I want to bring back at some point, I mean, obviously I want to work on Alloy 2, um, but there's another one I did. I started, it's called Frog. It's just F R A W G. I spelled it funny because that's what we did back then, man. Just edgy names. Mm-hmm. Fuck yeah. Anyway, it, it was yeah, epic. it was it was put a, kind put of a, X in there. Somewhere. Yeah, Frog X twenty thirty. <laughs> <laughs> that's a sick name for it. Yeah, uh, the whole thing started. It was just it was a flash game, but it it started. It was more of a toy than a game, I guess. It, I never really knew what it was going to become. Uh, basically, I made it for the browser and you played it with a mouse but realistically it would be a perfect mobile game because what you would do is you had this frog and it had like springy physics in the legs and shit you'd click his body you'd drag him the opposite way you want him to go and you'd let go and he'd go flying you know like those fling games where you, you fling your whole character and it looked really neat and then you could just click anywhere away from the frog and he would shoot his tongue out and he could eat shit, or he could like grab onto walls, and it would pull him like a just like a little spring snap. And it was just, it was just really fun to play with, and I think it's got a lot of potential as a game. But I had no idea what to do with it. Like my original thought was, well, let's make it a, a platform game, or like a, you have to just navigate these worlds and not die. And there's I, it, it just kind of got lost on me. And then I'm thinking maybe it could be like a platform puzzle game where you got to get through the levels and. But yeah, I got I got I got to figure out what it should be at some point. But it's just the toy itself, and a lot of games. Like you guys can probably test to this. A lot of games start out that way, where you just kind of make this little toy to play with, and then you got to put it into a world, and that's kind of a challenge. And that's where I'm stuck with on that one. But I would love to bring that one back because it's just so fun to play with this little toy. Yeah, I've seen so many so many games that are exactly that. Like they they have this really neat, fun, cool, like really base simple concept, but like the whole process of game design kind of eludes you because it's like you know you got to make that transition from here's this little thing to here's the entire game and it's yeah yeah it can yeah. be rough and you can put this oh, toy in so many toy, games <laughs> a fun little toy is actually a very strong base for a game yeah if you, if you can just like Usually. move the character like, around it's, it's fun, fun it's like you've got something yeah like that's 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 the goal in any prototype yeah. to me is to have it be fun with as minimal stuff in there as possible because then you know that you know, if you add more stuff, it's only gonna get better. Yeah, yeah. So, unless you yeah. overcomplicate it, and then you're like, uh, then you lose focus on the toy, and I think that's the trouble I ran into is you started losing focus on the yeah. toy, and it, it wasn't working, and and I just got to bring it back at some point. But yeah, it was a lot of fun. I think that'd be good. What about you, Sean? What do you got for a game you'd like to to bring back to life? Uh, it's, so there's like a tiny part of me that that wants to still try and revive this this old like territory war tank man game mm. um yes. but i i'd, I'd yes. post it on twitter <laughs> so okay like because i was talking to jeff about this like before I, I i made this this kind of thread on twitter and i was like telling people about it um and i was talking to to jeff johnny utah the he who does tank man I'm, I'm sure everyone knows um because i i wanted permission to like you know throw up his old art and stuff and uh and he was like he was like, yeah, this is really cool. Like, why didn't we ever finish this? And I was like, I, I literally don't know. Like, I, I couldn't tell you a, a single reason, you know, obviously this was like 10 or 15 years ago and who knows what happened. But um, so it's just, especially with this, like, I mean, there's been a huge kind of like Newgrounds renaissance in like the characters and the lore and and obviously with Friday Night Funkin' and everything. And just to see like the response to that, that Twitter thread and, um, you know, all the people that were, that, uh, you saw the video and everything um the the problem is like the because i I, i've done a a bunch of territory war games and for whatever reason i don't know how i got into it but i like i i almost hate the gameplay of territory war like like worms type (laughs) games and i'm not even sure why i made one to to begin with so (laughs) there's that weird is there's that weird thing of like I, I think people would enjoy this game but i also don't think i would enjoy it at all and it's really hard i i don't want to say at all but Obviously, it's it's really easy to imagine this like universe where you would have, you know, your base teams would be tank men characters, and then you could 
uh, almost in a Newgrounds Rumble style, pull in characters from all, you know, different Newgrounds uh, uh, universes, right? And you could have, like, you could have Pico as, like, the a captain on your team, and maybe he has a special ability where he kind of, like, dual wields his guns or something like that. And there's just a, there's a bunch of different ways you could go with it. But, uh, I, I mean, like, after that thread, I was, like, seriously considering, like, opening up Unity and, like, starting to do some stuff. But I would just, I got really busy with some other stuff. So yeah, no, it could be yeah. a problem to work on something if you don't actually like that style. Yeah, I know it, it makes me feel really bad. Like I feel, I feel genuinely bad about it, but yeah, um, it's, <clears throat> it's just weird. Uh, so yeah, I mean, a decent amount of the games that I've made were fueled by hatred of that genre. <laughs> <laughs> I, can do, I can do this better. I can do this better. <laughs> I, can, I don't like, like it. I just want to tight. prove it can be done right. <laughs> Yeah, well, and, I mean, like, and the entire of it, concept of closure was like, I hate dark levels in games every time. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the ultimate dark level. <laughs> well, and, and like you guys were talking about, part of it was the online stuff, too, because I the second Territory War game I made online, which was, like, it was successful, but it was, like, terrible to work on and test because, uh, like, if you want to test an online game... You know, you compile the code or you, you export your file and then you have to, you have to open up two of them. You have to connect them to the server. You have to join them in a game together. I mean, you can automate that process, but it still adds like at least five minutes of testing time on to uh, just like joining a game with someone and, and making sure like this packet of data gets sent back and forth. Um, yeah. And then it's, it always it's just really does if, it's, if you do it locally, it always yes. works, which is the other issue when you're trying to see what happens when it doesn't work. Yep. Um, so yeah. And, and, uh, yeah, I pr pretty much same thing as what Glail said. I was like, I don't ever want to make another online game. And if I, it would be weird to make a new battle game territory war and then like kind of go backwards in functionality and not have it online. So, uh, yeah. you know, we'll see, like maybe, maybe someday, I guess, but, uh, it's, change your name, it, 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 change your name, call it tank man where nobody will know, nobody will know. And then you okay, can make yeah. it however you want. Oh yeah. Pro yeah, tip. Pro tip. <laughs> if, if, so, if, if your company's not going the way you want it, just change the name. That's what Zuckerberg That's says. Fair. Yeah. <laughs> very, keeping it very relevant. Here. Call it uh, Meta War. Meta War. There you go. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> join the join the Meta War. Uh, get drafted into the Meta War. There you go. People don't yes. get to choose if they want to play this game. <laughs> they just get an email that says you have to play this game. Though. Fuck. Yes. <laughs> I wonder what major topical event has happened this week while these guys were recording. <laughs> <laughs> Halloween is the major topic. Yeah, yeah that's what it is. Yeah. Halloween. Yes. <laughs> that's why I mean, I've been so scared. So you guys, um what do you what do you think you learned from like just letting games go or just pushing through them? Like for me, most of the shit I've learned has been from games I never finished because I think probably 500% of the games I've started, 495% of them. <laughs> I don't know what the math is on it, but I never finish. I never finish it. But I always learn a new skill, a new trick. Like You guys have the same type of experience there? Yeah, you, win some, yeah. you win some, you lose some. Which, <laughs> yeah. And you, even, if it, even if you don't like learn a new trick, you might learn, like, you know, I probably shouldn't do the next project this way. So... You learn like yeah, not yeah. to go down certain paths. Yeah, you find your weaknesses and your yeah. strengths. Yeah, yeah, pretty much that. Yeah, Great question strong. that I answered myself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, thanks for thanks for leaving it open for us. Very insightful, job. I, I tried it. Like I had something. This I yes. had a response, and it's just gone now it's just gone yes josh i i have learned gone, from like every half these games <laughs> i've learned from every game that i've never completed you are correct there's always there's always a piece i mean i guess that's like you know it's it sounds really like trite and silly but like literally making anything unless it was just like, like it, it's almost impossible to make something and not learn something from it um so yeah yes yeah. like impossible to like make yeah. something just mindlessly yeah. yeah, like yeah. everything has like some thought, like like effort put into it to some extent. Yeah, you, like you know it or not. So it's like, I don't know, it all it all like builds. You know, the the more you make games, the better you get at making games. That's what we're going for. Yeah, yeah. Even if you and I'll them. I'll add like I don't consider any of these like abandoned or dead projects failures as long as I learned something from them while making them. Yeah, and whether or not that's you know 
oh, this mechanic's cool. Let me just steal that for this other thing or put it on the backlog or, like, because a lot of my games are, like, mix and match mechanics where I'm like, oh, well, this game didn't really work out, but this mechanic's kind of neat and this mechanic from that game's kind of neat and this one's kind of neat and then you can try them in, like, different contexts or whatever. It's like... It all it all works. It all works together. Yeah. My fun story there is like a lot of the stuff I picked up, um, mostly working on games like Alloy, but other platformers and stuff. I came up with like little tricks and stuff for making brawlers and things like that. And the irony is when I finally got to put them in another game again, it was for the goddamn flash forward jam. And <laughs> I had like two days to like just do this ambitious shit and I I went fucking way feature creep on it and the game itself is, is kind of a flop so I learned so much stuff I gotta use it again one more time and I put it in a shitty game <laughs> <laughs> yeah but nothing's stopping you from making yet another shitty game with those elements I, I'll tell you what I actually yeah. plan on making another game using that concept so it's it's not See? a dead concept and, and the game's done <laughs> it's not even a dead game it's just a shitty game <laughs> yeah I released my shitty games woo yeah, all okay, my I shitty think... games are still alive, uh, <laughs> thanks to Ruffle. Yeah. <laughs> and remember, when Ruffle gets better, yeah, think... we're going to have a, a shitty game AS3 uh, flash off, right? Oh, this is going to uh, be painful. Yeah. Dude, live on the podcast. Yes, live on the Ooh. podcast. Oh, my God. We should do that sometime, <laughs> just a fucking live on the podcast game jam. Oh, that'd be awful. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. Like mechanical keyboards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and just the entire podcast is... <laughs> Fuck! Yeah. <laughs> Why won't this work? <laughs> what do you mean, so, error nine seven two? I've actually never done a true game jam. I don't know about you guys. I am terribly slow at like uh, doing anything game related. Like even basic tasks. I don't know. I, I like overthink and I'm very methodical to a fault. Where like I just I literally don't think I could come up with uh, a game jam. Pro like I don't think I could have anything tenable in like a two-day period um i don't know maybe that's just me but you, you almost always have to have a team or someone to keep you reined in for sure i've started a lot of game gyms and then got two minutes in and then just stopped um and so even though that I, i've completed like i have three or four games that are on new grounds that are like legitimately just game jam games um and it just happens to be because i happens to come up with something that I actually liked. Yeah. Um, most of the time, it's just like, wow, this theme sucks. How the fuck are you supposed <laughs> to do anything? Like, the theme is too specific, so you can't actually, like, do anything creative with it without just, like, completely ignoring the theme. Or yeah. it's like, the team, the theme is not specific enough, and you just can't really draw anything yeah. from it. I think that's the thing with game jams. Like, it, it, it's very clear that you can't make a game in a game jam and have it be successful in any way, right? <laughs> well, I, yeah. I have that one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, agree. Yeah. Agree. You know. <laughs> yeah. No. Nah. No, nah, every game jam game sucks. And yeah. Future never goes anywhere. anywhere. Never goes anywhere. <laughs> No, yeah. listen, Friday yeah. Funkin' is, wins because we completely ignored the theme. That's why, <laughs> it, that's why it's, it's successful and powerful. What was the theme for that jam? Uh, it was stuck in a loop. And you uh, know, that's, the, that's definitely Friday Night Funkin', right? Right, guys? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I mean, if you keep playing it, it over and over. Like right. Funkin'. <laughs> the gameplay loops. Yeah. <laughs> when you stop the song, you can play it over if you want. <laughs> Dude, I got when I um I did Fracium as a Ludum Dare game, and um uh, that game got first in that Ludum Dare, so I have oh. a one hundred percent win rate. Uh, Ludum <laughs> Dare when I <laughs> undefeated. Um, <laughs> Undefeated. <laughs> uh, so uh, for the for the competition version, not the jet, because I have one other that did not. You get. did you did better than Friday Night Funkin. Friday Night Funkin didn't even make yeah. top ten in but anything. The funny thing is, is that some someone on Ludum there got extremely mad that the game won first place, um, and was claiming that I was leveraging my celebrity to get votes Ooh. on it because I posted <laughs> it on New, because I posted it on Newgrounds and. Uh, <laughs> New Guns was uh, still big in like 2012 or whatever when that came out. 
Um, and that guy started posting his own shit, and he's like, "This is what a, this should have won instead." And it was his own game, and it was just kind of like some terrible piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, "Why I put so much effort into this, and this piece of shit wins?" I'm like, "God damn, do I love people like that though?" <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like that's that's one of the best parts about being a game. The developer. tears, just people's tears. Yeah, yeah. tears. The haters. Running on spite. They fuel me. <laughs> Probably the reason why half these games died was because they didn't like get released and didn't get to have haters. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a big truth. That's why fucking Friday Night Funkin' did so well. It's got a lot of haters. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah that's the fuel. That's the fuel. <laughs> haters stay mad, we stay winning. Yeah. Keep it real, oh, yeah. keep it real. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to open uh, things up to the audience here. Uh, do we have any game devs in the audience that want to talk about some of their experiences with dead games? Go ahead and uh, raise your hand and we'll try and get you on the show. Uh, we have this one guy here named Tom Fault. Does he want to come on? Tom Fault? Tom yeah, Fault? Uh, I've got a long list of his games. <laughs> um, Pico 2. I bet Tom has released every game he's ever started. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's hiding. He's hiding. He's, hi- he's hiding. He doesn't want to. He doesn't want to answer. He doesn't want to talk about the elephant in the room. <laughs> yeah. We should just make up some stories. We should make up some stories. Pico Two was canceled because it actually had forty-two minutes of the movie Titanic in it. Oh yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, yeah it, got D- it got DMCA'd for having that that song. <laughs> Celine, Celine, Celine Dion did not want to be associated yeah, with school shootings. <laughs> Put this on the Newgrounds iceberg. Pico 2 predicted 9-11. <laughs> Fun fact, there was, a, like, there was like a like Pico literally flies there's a plane like a, into a building. If you go deep on Newgrounds, there's like a cursed Pico 2 file that corrupts your computer when you access it. <laughs> Pico2.exe. Yeah. It's like the, yeah, it's like the ring. Fucking Pico comes out of your screen. It's one of them, one of them like creepy, <laughs> creepy pasta. It's like an SCP or whatever. Oh. oh, wait. Look what the cat dragged in. Look what the cat dragged in. There's Mr. Toffa. Well, thanks for coming on, Gert. Hi, Tom. Appreciate it. Right. You, Tom you Fall, how you doing? We, we can hear you. What, what's up yes, with Pico2? Why, yeah. why did that game die? <laughs> Actually, it's, instead of Pico2 with all this talk, with all this talk about meta, I was thinking I'd tell a different story today. <laughs> oh, look, 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 look at him avoiding the elephant in the room. All right, Tom, I like stories. Came let's, prepared. Hey, let's get our popcorn. Story time with Tom Fall. Tom Fall so, denies the Pico 2 allegations. <laughs> Click so U Grounds. U Grounds was like a concept that uh, I was working on with Dan Paladin. Like, I don't know, like maybe after like the web version of Alien Hominid somewhere around there. And Basically, picture kind of like Dad and me, but it's just all people from Newgrounds, like in a big, like Newgrounds world together. And if you want to like go to places and there's too many people there, you'd have to wait in a line or wait in traffic. And like while you wait in a line or traffic, you like talk to the other people that are in line. Ah, like, yes. With you. Waiting in line simulator. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically. Very cool. And, idea. Um, you know, what if we. We never really had any plan for how to do the online multiplayer part, though. So I, th- I think that's kind of why I never, never made it any further than that. But I still think about the whole. What, 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 what timeline is this? Is this like two thousand two ish? I think around there. So what, was it like co-op 2003? multiplayer? I, I just think in the capabilities Newgrounds had around. Well, it's gonna be this. It's gonna be like host, a whole like virtual world. You'd be able to host like fifty people tops. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why yeah. people would wait in line. I mean, it took like ten years to get like a Newgrounds chat or whatever. So yeah, that's yeah. true. When yeah. was Club Penguin? <laughs> it was Club Penguin the whole time. <laughs> yeah. well, no, no, when, like when? When did Club Penguin come out? That was like mid two thousands. Like right? Oh, was this the same era? Yeah, yeah, like two thousand five or some shit. Did that happened. Oh, yeah, two thousand five. I don't remember. I remember Have a Hotel had lines. Not not intentionally. Oh, maybe I'm mistaken it for how <laughs> I never I never played any of those. I just remember the ancient memes about them. Yeah, where people would like block the ladder to the swimming pool. Oh yeah. Cool's <laughs> yeah. Cool's clothes, classic memes. <laughs> Do you guys remember that game where it was kinda of like it was kinda of like Havo, but someone was like a DJ and they would play music and there was like a room of people that would like just listen to the music? Friday remember Night Funkin'. That? 
<laughs> wasn't that MMO. wasn't it like toys and all like that? Is, is that what I'm thinking of? I, I'm picturing this game. I'm it. picturing this game where there's like these little guys and they just got big ball heads and the heads had like different graphics stamped on them, and then you could get a code for them in this fucking game. The original Metaverse, basically. Webkins, Webkins, <laughs> dude. Yeah, Webkins, Webkins. Yep, that might be it. No, my Webkins, Webkins sounds. Right. No, I, mean, I don't even remember. Yeah. Webkins like the dipshit stuffed animals. No, no, this is plastic. They're little plastic toys. God, I can't. Yeah. I don't know. Somebody out there knows what I'm talking about. Or I just Didn't hallucinated. Didn't Neopets have toys at one point? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They had some good games, too. I was... They had, uh, they had like... It was Turntable. Turntable? Was turntable FM. Turntable FM. Here, I posted a picture of it. Sight. Never, Never played that. Never played that. You never saw that? I don't think so. I think I, I imagine they vaguely got, remember. They probably them. got sued. They probably got sued out of existence for uh, something with the music. Uh, uh, Lil Wayne. <laughs> 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 bring it back. Bring it back. What uh? Promise, what I about um? The there's a there's a dead game that people can test on new grounds when they reach a certain level. It gets unlocked. Pixel Puncher. What about that one? You want to talk about that one a little bit? So Pixel Puncher, that was. After the console version of Alien Hominid, and then before starting work on Castle Crashers, I was working with Jose and Astro Boy. Like Astro Boy and the GBA had this really cool like air juggling, and we wanted to do like a game with the air juggling in it. So the concept for that game is that all of the like really popular video game characters have been stealing pixels from, like, the lesser-known video game characters because they need to up their resolution to keep up with, like, modern video games. So you're basically this this guy who your village, everyone takes, like, a pixel and gives gives you one of their pixels to power you up, and then you go out into the different worlds to, like, beat up. Like, it was, like, a, like one world was, like, a Sonic knockoff, and one would be, like, a Mario. One would be, like, a Castlevania. And you'd, uh, you'd basically have to, like, kill the, uh, like the, the popular video game characters that have been stealing the pixels. You had like um you had like a gimmick too, like where if you lost health your character got like lower res, wasn't it? Was that you? That was a thing, but it I don't think that's in there right now. It's something that was in there but it looked Yeah, ugly. I remember seeing pictures of it. I remember he showed me that part. Yeah. It's kinda of stuck out. It was a neat gimmick. Yeah, it was kinda of like was it was like a yeah, it was like a fun idea but like an ugly <laughs> an ugly thing. What are those dead ideas? But, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I did make that one game that went lower resolution the longer you played it. Yeah. Yeah. That one's unplayable. That one's going to probably be the last game that ever gets emulated. On <laughs> <laughs> That's the Holy Grail. That, 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 that and the closure, the Flash version of Closure. There's <laughs> like an entire, <laughs> the entire thread on Ruffle for that one feature that I used that I was the only game that used that feature. <laughs> <laughs> you, you and Swain did that one, the low resolution one, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What feature was that? Uh, pixel Bender. It was oh, like pro- it was like early proto shaders for Flash yeah, that I don't yeah. think ever. I don't think it ever left beta. Um, and uh, Closure was probably the first game that used it, and probably the only game besides uh, the other one that I did. That used <laughs> it. So uh, that was an entire programming language. Um, with its own bytecode and own interpreter, and uh, yeah, Ruffle's gonna have to uh, figure out how that works. <laughs> fun with that, Mike. Have fun. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> so you got two test cases. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tom, you got any um, games you abandoned that you would just love to bring back someday, even if it's in a different form? Well, I guess I still, I still think about uh, <clears throat> there it is. Which he said it. So, he said it. <laughs> So he Pico, said the thing. Pico 2, it's, like, weird because, like, it, it, the whole scope of Pico 2 did get, like, out of control. It just kind of kept adding more characters and stories, like, all these different stories all on top of each other, which just got, like, r- ridiculous. And, um, but I still like to imagine, like, a 3D version of it now. And, um, and I don't know. It's always possible. I'd have to definitely, like, really think about, like, what what would the Pico 2 story be that's like a uh, achievable? But uh, but I haven't I haven't crossed it off the list. Did, was there like any issues with like the story that like I mean, give, given when you came up with the story, 
Is there a good chunk of it that you just fucking could not do today? It's like it is like cringy. It's just cringy yeah. now. But um, but it was still it was interesting though because the plot line was very much it was a post September 11th type of plot line, but the game was being made before September 11th. But I guess it's like a common <laughs> it's like a common plot line where. You know, like the bad people are trying to like seize control of society by through fear. Like, right. And um, so it wasn't really that amazing, but I, I always felt like a lot of parallels after September 11th. You so, could uh, so just, make um, Q-Quest. Quest, just make Q Quest. Just make Q Quest. Yeah, the whole idea is like the aliens and Pico do like horrible stuff on Earth to try and make Earth more, you know, more locked down and ready for them to come take over. So it's a, it but, predicted um, COVID as well. <laughs> yeah, that's too. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> this goes deeper yeah. than I thought. Yeah. There's an iceberg yeah. here. But um, yeah, it was wacky. But it was weird because I was like, I was getting into like a lot of political stuff in college. Like I was like kind of like having my eyes opened up to the world more, and I was like trying to like weave all these different little things in there. But then that all kind of like doesn't it just feels like cringy college kid stuff yeah. now. So it's just like. It's it's got to be weird looking back on it from like being cringy college Tom to like fucking modern Tom with kids and shit and just living in the suburbs. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what it would be like. You know, with the amount of characters you were cool. thinking about doing, you, you ever considered Pico Cinematic Universe in game format? Just chop it down into bite-sized games and eventually have a crossover. I mean, yeah, that's a possibility. That would be the best way to do it. There you go, Probably there you go. Problem solved, Pro- P- Pico yeah. 2 universe. We just figured it out. It's happening. We need a Nene's interactive suicide follow-up. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I don't think you can follow up that one. <laughs> <laughs> good times, good times. Well, appreciate you talking about the uh, Pico 2, Pixel Puncher, etc. Got any uh, advice for people who have given up on games and just Need a little boost, guys? Any Anything to tell the people to not let these dead games get them down? Let them stay dead. <laughs> I mean, I mean, yeah, <laughs> no, if, if, no, if they're a, bad, yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a serious, it's a serious yeah, legitimate, exactly. legitimate advice. Don't be, like, don't be afraid to move like on. If you, like, just do something yeah. else. Yeah. But just move, qu- like, just quickly, just do something else. Oh, yeah, don't. I don't like, this is, hold on. This is the thing that I try to get every like new developer to do is to make games as quickly as possible. If they're playable, put a title screen on them and release them. Don't try to make them good. Like if you spend like a week working on it and it's playable, fucking put a title screen on it and release it. Yeah. Or don't and then do something else. Like just the more the more that you do, the better that you'll you'll get better way faster that way. Bada bing bada boom. Yeah, and it, I mean, it would be really weird if you didn't have a graveyard of dead games to, to show. Unless it's your yes. first game, you, you might finish. You might get lucky. Yeah, just yeah. kill them when they're, like, young. Don't, like, let them... Don't work on a game for, like, five years and then kill it. Yeah. But, well, don't let it get to the point where you're working on a game that's going to die for five years. Yeah, you, you, sh- you should know at least after three years. <laughs> yeah, three years. Three years tops. <laughs> if it's not working after three years, but, you should probably call it. Hear that, Tom? Hear that, yeah. Tom? <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not listening. <laughs> 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 this is the part where we scare Tom. It is very special. Yes, we give Tom Ooh. nightmares about nightmare cops. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Well, appreciate you guys coming on to the show. Appreciate the uh, guests we had. Uh, Tom Fulp came on. Thanks, Tyler, Sean, Cam. Love you guys. Of course. Here's the part of the show where we we, we give out our shout outs to our patrons because we actually have those and it's it's amazing. So we're going to uh, we're gonna start. Meryl, Daniel Sun, Zachary Jones, Spectre Lee, Ravi, Gio Corelli, Cortaggi, Charissa. Boozle, Bacon, Stepford, ooh, this is getting to be a long list. I need more breaths. Pixel Turkey, Benny, and now we go to our uh, Super Grand patrons, Tara Vex, Kevin Polo, Daniel McDonald, and Carter Sterling, and our number one money daddy, uh, 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 Mr. Tom Fall. Thanks for the money, Tom. Great show, Tom guys. Had a lot of fun. Show. Woo! Happy Halloween, everybody. (laughs) 
Tom paid Thanks, his Tom. way onto the show. Yeah. All right, now paid <laughs> away in hell. Here's here's where we're going out on the show. Let's make it spooky. Everybody make spooky noises. Ooh, vomit, Ooh. vomit noise, vomit noise. <laughs> Friday night busy. funkin'. Yawn. <laughs> Friday funkin'. <laughs> Nightmare cops release day. <laughs> Online multiplayer. <laughs> oh no. Unity game engine. Bringing flash oh, formal man. where you can <laughs> up and share your own F and F levels. Nightmares, nightmares, the nightmares. Metaverse. <laughs> metaverse. <laughs> metaverse. <laughs> metaverse. And last but not least, Little Wing. NFTs. <laughs> NFTs. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Friday night punking NFTs. Uh, Good night, uh, everybody. <laughs> Happy Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for listening to the New Grounds Podcast. This show is recorded live on our Discord server. Join us at bit.ly slash NGP Discord. For the latest news, follow us on Twitter at the NG Podcast. Thank you to Waterflame for the use of his song, Gabberfly. Goodbye.